Hello and welcome to the State of the Fleet Industry, a weekly video series produced by Automotive Fleet Magazine and which is sponsored by Enterprise Fleet Management. I'm Mike Antich, editor of Automotive Fleet, and today I'd like to examine what's occurring in the fleet industry for the week of April 26, 2021. And there's been a lot of developments in the past week, particularly in the area of new product availability and order to delivery times, which are being driven by the ongoing microchip shortage. So let's dive right in and examine what is the current situation with this supply chain disruption. And one of the new developments, at least for me, is that the anticipated duration of the microchip shortage continues to get more muddied. When the shortage first came to light in the US, the forecast was that the microchip supply should reach equilibrium with end user demand by this summer. Then as the weeks progressed, we began to hear from industry experts saying that the shortage could extend through the entire 2021 calendar year, which to be honest, was kind of a shock to me. And now in more recent interviews with semiconductor industry leaders, the forecast for the duration of the shortage is becoming even more muddied. And in particular, there was a recent interview in the Washington Post newspaper with Pat Gelsinger, who is the CEO of Intel, which is the largest semiconductor company by revenue. And you figure if anyone should know the semiconductor business, it'd be the CEO of one of the world's largest semiconductor companies. And I personally put a lot of credence in what he says versus listening to others who are outside of the semiconductor industry. So what did he say in the interview? First, Gelsinger says it'll take a couple of years for the global semiconductor shortage to abate. A couple of years? You know, is he saying that the shortage and best case won't fully abate until the 2023 calendar year at the earliest? And as I reread the article, it appears that's exactly what he's saying. And the reason he gives are as follows. One, it takes a couple of years to build capacity to manufacture additional semiconductors to meet this increased, and here's the key word, this increased and in growing demand. Semiconductor demand is not static and it'll be growing year over year. On average, it takes three to four years to build a semiconductor factory. And as a result, the increased manufacturing capacity is not going to become operational overnight. Second, you know, the auto industry is dependent on microprocessors. For example, a new vehicle depending on its trim level, option packages, and standard equipment, requires anywhere from 50 to 150 semiconductors. And since we're in the automotive industry, we tend to look upon this microchip shortage from solely an automotive perspective. However, this is a global microchip shortage that extends beyond the global automotive industry. And the microchip shortage is also impacting many other industries, such as personal computer manufacturers, uh, medical equipment manufacturers, telematics companies, the entire consumer electronics industry, smartphone manufacturers, and a wide gamut of companies that manufacture household appliances. So in other words, everyone who uses semiconductors in their final product is being impacted by the global shortage. And compounding this problem is that many end user companies in all industries are scrambling to source semiconductors anywhere and everywhere. And this is causing supply chain confusion as end user customers are placing chip orders with multiple factories because they aren't sure which orders will come true. In other words, they're playing the field. And according to chip makers, this uptick in multi-sourcing is making it hard for them to understand where they need to allocate supply in order to meet real short-term needs of their end user customers. And as we know, the US government has also weighed in on this issue and the Biden administration recently held a virtual uh, meeting to discuss its proposal to spend $50 billion to subsidize the building of new semiconductor manufacturing facilities here in the US, which by the way, most industry observers say is inadequate. Some say the country's goal should be to increase US chip its U.S. chip manufacturing uh, market share from the current 12% of global manufacturing capacity 
to between 24 and 30 percent in order to avoid future supply chain disruptions to our domestic industries. And this is an, an unrealistic goal. This is what the U.S. market share uh, was in, 1990, in the 1990s for semiconductor manufacturing. And to achieve this goal, it'll require a much bigger investment than $50 billion. But I don't think money is the issue here. From my perspective, the real interesting point that came out of the White House virtual meeting was a proposal that the auto industry receive priority in the allocation of new chip production. But predictably, there was significant pushback from other industries attending the virtual meeting saying they didn't want one manufacturing sector to receive preferential treatment. However, you know, it may be necessary to give certain industries priority allocations, and there is precedence, as the U.S. government did during the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, segmenting the economy into essential and non-essential businesses. And by any measure, the auto industry is essential to the well-being of the U.S. economy. So consider this. The auto industry is the largest manufacturing sector in the U.S., the auto industry contributes $1.1 trillion to the U.S. economy, and it represents 5.5% of the country's GDP, gross domestic product. And the auto industry simply can't be put on equal footing as the manufacturing of video game consoles or microwave ovens. When it comes to sourcing semiconductors that are in short supply, allocation priority needs to be given. And my hope is that the duration of the microchip shortage will be somewhere in between what is being predicted, while there might be a good possibility that the shortage will last for the balance of the 2021 calendar year, hopefully it will not last beyond that. And in the final analysis, one thing is certain, demand for semiconductors is guaranteed to increase in future years. And one study forecasts that semiconductor sales will more than double from the current $450 billion annually to $1 trillion in annual sales by the year 2030. And hopefully, semiconductor manufacturing capacity is going to increase in parallel with this anticipated growth in end user demand. Otherwise, we'll be looking at a future microchip shortage, but one that could be much worse because most likely we'll be entering that next generation of vehicle connectivity at that time. So on that note, I'd like to conclude my State of the Industry presentation for the week of April 26, 2021, and I'd like to thank you for listening.